Fox projecting a sizable win for Hillary Clinton in Puerto Rico's primary today. The New York senator expected to get the lion's share of the island's Commonwealth, uh, the island Commonwealth's 55 delegates, but not enough to put a big dent in Barack Obama's delegate lead. Again, we're waiting for Senator Hillary Clinton to give her victory speech in San Juan. So what are we learning about Clinton's sizable win in Puerto Rico, and what does it mean for the overall race? With us now, our panel for analysis, associate editor of The Hill, A.B. Stoddard, Democratic strategist Bernard Whitman, and Republican pollster and strategist Chris Wilson. Thank you all for being here. Bernard, let's start with you. Uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign says they really want to get to the popular vote number. They're, in fact, they're running a new ad that says 17 million Americans have voted for Hillary Clinton more than any primary candidate in history. And uh, everyone's trying to get her out. 17 million people say don't. What about this popular vote uh, going after this? It's not really how Democrats decide who wins the nomination. Well, Brett, it's all true, and unfortunately, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Hillary Clinton's victory in Puerto Rico, while sizable, unfortunately lacks meaning. And unfortunately, it is too little, too late for the Clinton campaign. I think it's very clear that Barack Obama is going to be our nominee. I think Hillary will get out of the race next week once that, uh, the final primaries have come in. I think ultimately she'll endorse Barack. The Democrats will unify and will go strong into the November election. But insofar as, as the Clinton campaign, I think the end of the road has come. And you're saying that this hap that happens this week, she endorses Barack? I think that there is a very good likelihood that uh, after the June 3rd primaries within a few days or maybe five, six days after that, she will come out and endorse Barack. A.B., what does Hillary Clinton want? I, well, I think that she really wants a, a kind of a, we might see it as a hollow victory, this victory today, but I think that she's working hard in the final contest because she does want this kind of moral victory. I don't know what she'll ask for in terms of a spot on the ticket or a job in the cabinet or anything like that. None of us really know. She hasn't given any indication. But what's interesting is, you know, when you take an advertisement out to let the voters know about your popular vote count, you have to wonder about this. She's not any longer telling the superdelegates, you know, you have to listen to my popular vote argument. She wants everyone to know. She wants there to be a record that shows at the end how strongly she finished up and how well she did. That leaves the possibility, I think, that she tries to come back again in a few years. Chris, with the DNC decision yesterday, the magic number is now 2,118 delegates. Uh, and again, Barack Obama inching closer to this. With this popular vote argument, the Clinton campaign is saying they want to convince superdelegates. There's some 219 left. She would have to get 90 percent or more of them to come with her. It's just well, not realistic. That. It's probably not in that facet, but there is a chance that some of them could switch and move back over to Clinton, and that's what she's hoping for here. It does give her, this victory today does have some meaning, because it gives her the moral authority to, at the end of this process, to say, I should have been the nominee. It also gives a little bit of what I would call the I told you so strategy, which I think the Clinton campaign is starting to practice, which is at the end of the day, because you look at some of the weaknesses that are being developed around Obama, and it gets back to some of the specific controversies that continue to plague him, Reverend Wright, now uh, this week's new one coming from his church that he resigned from yesterday. Uh, the ability to, after this is all said and done, should Obama lose, for Clinton to say, I told you so, I should have been the nominee, now give it to me in 2012 and let's get on, get on from this. Bernard, do you but, want to but I, I tell you, Brett, nothing gets uh, Democrats more united than being out of the White House for eight years. And I think that though we've had a bruising primary fight, you're going to see Hillary Clinton come out in, in strong support of Barack Obama. You're going to see Democrats unify and draw a very clear contrast between uh, John McCain and, and Barack Obama. And I think that come, uh, come the fall, this party is going to be unified, very powerful, and, and likely victorious. A.B., uh, quickly, as we continue to watch the intro speakers here for Senator Clinton's victory speech, what do you expect her to say today? And, and do you think the Clinton campaign is really staying in in case there's a bombshell, in case there's something else that we haven't heard about Barack Obama? Well, I mean, I think they have been staying it. Look, we knew the math um, was something she couldn't catch up to. At the end of February, before Texas and Ohio, we said that the measures by which she'd have to succeed were insurmountable, and indeed she could not overcome his um, pledged delegate lead. I, I think that it is clear she's been staying in this whole time in case something happened. Um, but I don't, I, I, I still think that, I, I agree there is a possibility that she does get out this week, and I don't, I don't see her going to the convention. Chris, what's she going to say today? 
I, I think she's going to point out that she did. She has now received more popular votes. She's going to try and speak to the superdelegates and say, look, I can actually win Hispanics, and that's a big part of this. And right now, McCain is doing as well with Hispanics as Bush did in 2004. Bush lost him in 2000 by 27 points, only lost him by 7 in 2004. That's where McCain is now. Clinton does much better in some of these swing states. And I think that's the message she's going to try and do. This, this speech today is going to be to the superdelegates saying, look, I can win the general election. Barack Obama cannot. And that's what she's trying to get across. Chris, A.B., Bernard, thanks so much for being here. Great panel. Well, with a win in Puerto Rico, Hillary Clinton proving she has an edge over Barack Obama when it comes, as Geraldo mentioned, to the Latino vote. She's already shown she's had support of white working class voters. Hillary Clinton arguing yet again today she's a stronger candidate than Barack Obama when going up against John McCain in the general election. With the two vital voting groups there favoring the former first lady, is she right? Joining us again, our panel, associate editor for The Hill, A.B. Stoddard, Republican strategist Chris Wilson, both from D.C., and Democratic strategist. Just Bernard Whitman here with me in New York. A.B., starting with you, you heard that speech from Hillary. She does make the case again and again that she's better against John McCain. Is she? Well, the problem with these polls is that um, we're, they're still in a primary race, and we just I don't know how well Barack Obama or how poorly he will fare against John McCain once that general election battle is pitched. Now, she makes she has a very strong argument, Brett. She's won the electorally rich battleground states. Uh, very important swing state. She's won big state. She's won a very good popular vote, though it cannot be correctly calculated and counted, as we know. Many caucus states don't calibrate, I mean, calculate that vote. Um, she has a good argument, and that's why you heard her say today, uh, we are winning the general against John McCain. It's sort of a good thing to say, and, and we've won the popular vote. And then she says the people have, cho have spoken, and you've chosen your candidate, and she's presenting herself as that candidate because she hopes that her strong, compelling arguments though they don't represent a lead in the pledge delegate count, will still sway those superdelegates. I don't think that we think it'll happen, but, but she, tonight in that speech, she was still making that case very strongly. Chris, Carl Rove has the magic electoral maps, and he does them constantly. And, and when you look at those maps, according to Carl, uh, Senator Clinton does do a lot better in different states that, that lean Democratic more with her than Barack Obama. Well, she does, and I think... The most fascinating aspect to, the, to me about what we saw today in Puerto Rico and what we've seen recently in Kentucky and West Virginia is that Clinton is not just winning these primaries, she's winning them big. Obama is, for all intents and purposes, the nominee. He's been up for a while. He should be winning these in the same way that John McCain was winning when Mike Huckabee was staying in at the end. And that, that's not occurring. And in essence, what you have here is the political equivalent of a team backing into the playoffs. He's sort of stumbling along and he's just barely going to make it at the very end because of what he was able to do in the caucus states. And that's not, I think, a, uh, an exciting prospect for Democrats as they look for what should be a fairly easy general election win for them that is slipping away due to the process that's occurred. Bernard, what about that? I mean, at the six o'clock or earlier uh, shows called it wheezing to the finish. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, look, I, I think if you listen to what uh, Hillary said, the, she thanked and, and recognized Barack Obama before she talked about her victory. She talked about how important it was to elect a Democratic president before she talked about her victory in Puerto Rico. And I think that with the revelations coming out this week in Scott McCullen's book, confirming what we all suspected, that the Bush administration has lied, misled, and deceived the American people, it's clear that John McCain has been a co-pilot on the BS Express, not the Straight Talk Express, for the last eight years. I think the one person who actually is more depressed about this than Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, or Chelsea Clinton is John McCain. Because he realizes now, come this week, he is actually going to have to face a united party, a real candidate, and I think it's going to be very tough for him uh, to go up against Barack Obama in November. We should point out there's a lot of pushback at the White House about Scott McClellan's book, as you can imagine. Uh, thank you, Chris, Bernard, A.B., as always. Great panel. 